Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Identity Manager version 7 bits. In this second video of the second part talking about account definitions in IT operation data, I want to show you now what is to customize if you start adding, for example, account definitions and automation level. In the first part, we have seen what was to configure in the manager. Now we will see what's to customize in the designer. Hopefully you will have fun with all of these code bits. Now let's start customizing and um, remember what we want to do. We have a new account automation level, which is the admin level. And depending on the admin level, we want to create a new admin account. As you remember, an identity manager exists uh, the behavior that an account name is taken from the person object. There's a field called person central account and that central account field is my account name. If I now deal with two accounts, that means the standard user account and the admin account, I must implement something that generates a difference between the account name for the standard account and for the admin account. Reason for that is pretty clear. I cannot create two accounts with the same person central account. To do so, I decided to show you the customizing and the consideration of, uh, of the automation level with the help of two fields. I will do that with the CN and I will show you that with the help of the same account name of an account. Both fields are part of the Active Directory account. And before you start with something like um, customization, it is always good to have a look on the mandatory fields so that you will be sure then in the future that these are the right fields you have chosen. There is as a mandatory field, this, these are the fields here with that nice rectangle. Uh, this is here the domain. The domain is given automatically by the account definition because the account definition is defined for a specific domain. So there's nothing to customize. The TSB behavior, which is our automation level, it's given automatically by the account definition. So I have not, nothing to do with that. Here is the canonical name that is auto build it by a script and build out of CN, semi whatever. CN, this is the one I want to customize. Distinguished name, built automatically out of the domain and the CN. So I have to do nothing. There is as well a mandatory field. This is the object class that is automatically given by inserting an Active Directory account. So there is nothing to do. And there is the same account name, the second field I have to customize. And there is another mandatory field, which is UID ADS account, which is auto set by the API because I create a new account object. With that, I'm sure CN and SEM account name are exactly the fields I have to customize. And to start with my customization, I step into the designer. In designer, I select the identity manager schema. There the ADS account. In the, on the ADS account, I select the CN field. Here we are. And then I jump to the top value forming. Here we are. And the first thing as an experienced person, uh, that have seen my videos before, um, you see here, this is already a customized field. And uh, the reason for that is I don't want to bother you with all the manual coding here. So I have done my coding stuff, but I want to show you the difference between the scripts. So I click on that customization icon and the system takes back the standard script that was customized before. So if I open that here, you can see the standard script. The standard script shows you here a number of, of code lines. I don't want to go too much into detail, but what you can see here is that my CN it's built out of given name and sure name and so on. At the end here, the building it's done. And then the system starts to figure out if that builded name here, it's too long for that specific field CN or not. That is what we are, what they are doing here with max length. So, this is, from my perspective, the position where you now can start to add something. For example, you can add a postfix that then divides the standard user account from the admin account. And to do so, I start my coding. And because I don't want to bother you, as mentioned, I hit here on the button, get my customized script, open the script again, and this time you can see I have just inserted here where the two lines are a new combination 
First of all, the first line that was here creating that specific variable uh, that was there before. Now green here, the stuff I have made, there is a select case. The select case goes to the automation level, uh, gets the ident of the automation level, makes it to upper, that means so that it's easier to compare. And then the case for admin levels is to say, take that, use the length of the field minus four and add four characters if this is not an admin automation level, then do the same than before, which is that one here. And with that, I add an admin, that means a space admin behind every of these admin accounts. And if there are not enough characters because the field length is already reached, the VID left makes it possible that we can add the admin stuff. The rest is as it was before. And with that, I'm good with that specific script. The same thing we have to do for the sim account name. So I switch to the sim account name here. Here we are. Same procedure as before. I step back to the standard script. As well, the sim account name is calculated with the help of a very, I will say, complex script pending here on the automation level and the IT data usage. That means initially created every time overwritten, whatever. At the end, you can see that here and here and as well here, there is an ACC string created, which contains at the end, the sim account name before we start to reformat that and make it uh, suitable for the field sim account name and whatever. So that means from my perspective, after the rough sim account name it's created, I should insert some lines of code here just to add, for example, a post fix again. And that is exactly what I've done. So back to my customized script, step into that customized script here. And you can see here, it's a new number of code lines. I consider my special account definition. Uh, here, the admin account definition again, the first line looks like it was before. In difference to the first script, I prove if my ACC length it's greater than 18. That means I'm not able to add a underscore A behind the SEM account name. If this is the case, I cut the SEM account and cut off the last two characters. And then I just add an underscore A. For all other purpose, I only add the underscore A because I'm under 20 characters. And with that, I have a new SEM account name. So pretty easy as well. I close my script. After my customization, I have to store that to the database. So I store that to the database, for example, here on a specific level. That is what I have done before. You see all my changes. That was the changes made by just toggling around between the fields. After that, I have to compile the database. And if the database is compiled, I can start testing. Now it's time to test what we have configured and developed before. Therefore, I create a new employee. I name it Robert Mayer. And Mr. Robert Mayer, it's a standard person with a, a Mr. And it's a male person. And I don't want to configure too many of these values. Let's step to the organization. Remember, we are using IT data. This is depending on our organization. For example, I will use what we have configured. This is accounting and in Accounting Australia. And on uh, yeah, maybe a cost center, if I want to create a new person, it's a good idea as well, according to the person, the Australian cost center. And at the end, I will configure a location. And here I will take one of these Australian locations. So, and with that, I store my new person, Mr. Mayer. And here he is. And just to explain that, because there's no automation configured, this is only an employee object, no according accounts. And the first thing I want to do is I want to assign a standard user. And that works by assigning a new account definition to this person, Mr. Mayer. And therefore, I step to assign account definitions. Here we are. And I want to add a standard user account 
to Mr. Mayor, so I just select the account definition for that and press save. Yes, in reality, you will do that automatically using roles or you will just uh, make that account definition requestable in IT shops so that it could be requested and approved and whatever. But at the end, the same thing happens. The person object get that account definition. And so I simulate that here by just assigning it uh, manually to Mr. Mayor. What should happen now in the background? In the background, my system should start calculating. And here we are. There are some processes. And these processes now will start to run something that is a script. This is that one here. And this script at the end will generate the account. So I monitor the process. And if I see a finish for that step here, now here we are, exists, finished. Then I should see as well a new process. And this process here is an account insert. And if I see that account insert job, then I can step back in my manager and figure out what was done on the account of on the person object of Mr. Mayor. And I can see an assigned account resource. Here it is. And I can see as well a standard user account. This is Robert M, which is standard, no admin postfixes. And I can see a home directory, which is on the IMS03 server, which is exactly the in the IT data configured server for the location. Remember, our server configured as a default was the two server. This is the three server that was configured for the IT data we have configured on the location. Perfect, that is my first step. I will check that Active Directory account in Active Directory a little bit later. Uh, what I want to do here in addition is now to assign an admin account. So I step back to assign account definitions. I assign an admin account as well. Hit on the save button and wait a bit until the system is doing something. And you can see here in the meantime, I create home job. That is a huge one that is just creating a home directory on the server that is for my standard user account. But in some seconds, if this process here, it's doing something, I should get a save a second projection job that creates a second account. Here we are. And now I can step back to the manager again on Mr. Mayor. And here is now a second user account. It's in the same domain. It's the domain IAM like before. It is an admin account. You can see that with the help of the postfix here. And there is no home directory configured. Only thing that could be of interest is where the AD container is. So I step first on the Active Directory account of Mr. Mayor, which is the admin account, and check the container. And you can see I am corp admin. This is what we have configured. Brilliant. And if now at the end we see the user's container, that means the container Australia for the standard user account, then we are in clean shapes. So let's step on that. And here we are. It is the company accounting container. This is exactly what we have configured in the IT data. And, and this tells us here that the complete account definition and IT operating data configuration stuff works perfectly. To be honest, it is not that easy than it looks like because we have made only a very small uh, customization change. The next thing to test is now what happens if accounts appears from the outer side or from the inner side. That means we have to improve the matching script so that it matches as well admin accounts to person objects. Remember, depending on SEM account name equals person central account or CN equals person central account, accounts gets auto matched to person objects. Uh, this will not work for admin accounts because there's a underscore A on the SEM account name or a space at DM at the end of, uh, of a CN. And that is something we have as well to consider if we want to make that waterproofed. But I think the message is clear. This is the way to do it. Last but not least, and this only because it is always nice to see that provisioning works as well. I open my users and computers for Active Directory and search for Mr. Mayor. So I step to search and say Mayor 
And here are the two Active Directory accounts and only to show it again as well in Active Directory. This is Mr. Mayer's account in Active Directory, same account name with an A. If I step on profile, there is no home, there is no profile. And if I do the same for the properties here of the account of Mr. Mayer, there is no A behind and here we see there is a home server configured. The very last thing we should talk about are how linked accounts are working. As you can see here in the manager, there is a person object and this person object, this is an employee, it's Joanne Linked. And Joanne Link, it's the person I want to use to get an account linked to her. Therefore, I step to Active Directory and in Active Directory, there's the section user accounts and no employee assignments. And one of these accounts are not assigned to a person object. It's the Active Directory account of Joanne Link. You can see it's in the users container located. There is a sim account name for it. It's a standard domain user, but there's no person object link. To get her linked, I step into the master data page of that Active Directory account, step to employees and find Joanne. And here she is. And you can see no account definition right here. And this says that there is no property exchange between person objects and Active Directory accounts. I save the whole thing. And stepping back to my person object, you should see immediately there is the person object, there is the account, and there is nothing other else. There's no home directory and so on here configured depending on the IT data, which are given here by these locations and departments and so on. Last thing to do, I want to show you how to convert all of this. Therefore, I assign an account definition to my person object. That is the standard user account definition. And with saving that, I get some processes again. And I will say seconds after, we should see here not only an account definition, we should see here as well some changes on the account. So let's wait a bit. And after some seconds, if I try to refresh the page, you see changes here on the Active Directory account. There is now a home directory and there is a full managed status, which comes because we have assigned that account definition and that account definition was converting the Active Directory account to a full managed standard user account. And with that, this should be enough for that video series around account definitions and IT operation data. And I will see you the next time when I talk about Identity Manager version 7 bits.